Jack. Yes. I'll tell you a story from my childhood. Oh, uh, okay. I'm so, totally into yeah, this yeah. now. <laughs> so I, as a kid or even as an adult, who doesn't love potato chips, right? Okay. So I had potato chips. And then, you know, you go to a fast food restaurant and then I ordered French fries. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, for turkey dinner, there's mashed potatoes, right? And then in the, in the breakfast, brunch, you know, diner, you can get hash browns. Yes. Okay. I think I was 11, mm -hmm. maybe 10, before I figured out that all of those were the same food. Right. Well, a potato. I mean, it's nothing to think about when you're 11 or 12. It's just food. It's just food, and it's delicious. And, and only cares. one of them, two of them have the word potato in it. That's right. Uh, mashed potatoes and potato chips, but they are completely different from each other. Oh, without a doubt. And french fries, no one says potato. And hash browns, they don't say potato. Right. So and my I kids grew up on freedom fries, so they don't even know what French fries. <laughs> freedom <are>. fries, okay. <laughs> so, so it was a it was a revelatory moment for me to realize that one food could be made so different and so interestingly different to have its its own place within our culinary offerings. Mm -hmm. Each right. one of those could do that, right? Oh, another one I like were the potato sticks. Do you remember those? Oh God, yes, man. And do you remember? The potato sticks that, um, uh, oh, well, yeah, they're, they're the same thing. Never mind. So they had, they were like french fries. They had the big potato sticks, and then they had the tiny little matchsticks potato sticks. The matchsticks, those were the best because oh. it was like a lot of salt yeah, in it. Okay. So crispy. the point is. Okay, I am starving. I'll be back. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so they were all different, yet they were the same. Right. Right. And so, too, was my revelation of middle school, early middle school. It was probably well, probably sixth grade now, where because I was an early geek, but realizing that okay, you've heard of these things called microwaves, you've heard of radio waves, you've heard of uh, infrared, ultraviolet, you've seen rainbows, visible light, you've heard of X rays, you've heard of gamma rays. It's all the same thing. Right. It is. It is just different ways of preparing your light. Okay, uh -huh. to use my potato analogy. And so it you're is, basically 11 years old and you're making this discovery for yourself. After I realized about the potatoes, yes. Okay, because I <laughs> okay. was 37. <laughs> so, so I said, my gosh, it's all light. It all travels at the speed of light. And this word light, where you're talking about what the human retina can see, that's very limiting for if you want to talk about the universe, because so what's the our favorite light colors? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. What you Viv? Okay, continue there, and you go to the other side of violet. You get ultraviolet. You go beyond violet. That's how it got its name. It's beyond violet, and we abbreviate it UV. But I like flesh and uh, ultraviolet. G give me give me all the syllables that it's got. Okay, and this is the sounds far more har harmful. Uh, what, what, in, in fact, it is because this in this direction we are reducing the wavelength of light that's coming to us, and when you reduce the wavelength of light, more energy is packed into one pulse of that light, and so the energy goes up. Well, okay. Okay. So the higher the frequency, it's how many crests go by per second. The higher is the energy of that light. So the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet is all sort of pretty harmless you get into ultraviolet light it has enough energy to break apart biological molecules uh -oh. and this will give you skin, sunburn and skin cancer right okay so i heard a dj talk about when he just learned that the temperature on venus was 900 degrees he said well you better bring sunblock a million for that so he's wrong he's thinking that you you you're protecting that, from the heat that you can block that Right, no, right. No, you're not blocking heat. Right. The point of the sunblock is to block just the just, UV. Just, just the UV. Okay, right. right. So, so, you so still, you're still getting dark and crispy no matter what you want to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, you'll get toasted. You you're don't toasted, get toasted right. no matter what. No matter what. So then you go beyond the ultraviolet, and that's when you get the X-rays. Right. X-rays is part, it is continuous with the ultraviolet. 
right? The, you, we, we put a line there just because our convenience of words and machines built on it, but, but ultraviolet smoothly transitions to x-rays. Interesting. Okay? And, and you know x-rays are bad for you because when you go in the x-ray room, what does the x-ray tech do? Um, they go to a bomb shelter. They <laughs> leave the room. <laughs> they say, are you okay? Are you comfortable? Yeah, okay. Boom. Door closes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they look through a lead, lead glass, and right. then they, okay. So, uh, so x-rays can actually penetrate your skin, unlike ultraviolet. And in doing so, uh, it can actually harm your organs. All right. And so you can get organ failure from it. And organ cancers are triggered by this. Now, it, once again, it's a continuum of a change of wavelength of light. And then you get to beyond X-rays, you get to gamma rays. Right. And by the way, gamma rays just keep getting higher and higher energetic, but we don't have more words for it. Right? It's just the last word we've got. But you could have divided that up even more. We just don't. Okay? Right. And so... You would have thought gamma rays get, get omega rays or something like ooh, that. Ooh, yeah. ooh. That, I wonder what superhero would be made from omega <laughs> rays. <laughs> well, gamma rays are um, in the early days before we fully understood what the sources of energy were. There were alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles. Alpha, beta, gamma, and the alpha particle is a helium nucleus. The beta particle is an electron, and the gamma ray is a photon. But they all had energies that we could measure. So we're measuring the energies, not knowing what the thing was that caused it at the time. But that all splits out. So we have, um, like I said, uh, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. There you have it. All right. Go the other direction. Wavelengths are getting longer. Mm -hmm. The energy is dropping. So you go below the red. You get infrared below the red. All right. By the way, you can't see infrared. You can't see ultraviolet. If you buy, I, I want an ultraviolet bulb. We used to call them black light bulbs. I want an ultraviolet bulb and you turn it on and you see it. You say, I can see the ultraviolet. No, you're not. You're seeing the violet. Right. Okay. There's a little bit of violet spilling out. The actual ultraviolet, you don't see at all. Same with the infrared lamps. You buy an infrared lamp. If that was pure infrared, you turn it on, you wouldn't see a damn thing. Okay. Right. You're but not a little... predator. <laughs> exactly. So a little bit spills into the red part. So you see the red emitted by the infrared lamp. All right. We can detect infrared, not by our eyes, but by our skin. You, f you detect infrared as warmth. Right. All right. It's a detector. Think of it that way. All right. A warmth detector. So there's the infrared. And then you go beyond infrared, below, below infrared. The, what used to just all be called radio waves. And then they said, well, there's a section of the radio waves that have special utility for us for communicating. It's just the shortest of the radio waves, and they call them microwaves. Sweet. Short radio waves, microwaves. So that, that, get, that got a, labeled right there between infrared and radio waves. And beyond microwaves, we have radio waves. But, and now we're getting physically realizably sized wavelengths of light. So microwaves are about a centimeter long. We can actually show that. Between a millimeter up through a few centimeters. And then when you get into the a meter zone, yards and things, those are radio waves. And once again, like, like gamma rays, these just continue forever. And we don't have more words for it. Right. Which is why we have so many different broadcast, or are those just frequencies? But the frequency, yeah, the, the, the frequency, the frequency is, is the wave. It, we, you can call them, they call, call them wavelengths, right, but wavelength. it's our habit to call them frequencies. Right. Right. So each frequency, when you're tuning, right. on a, in the old days, you'd have an AM or an FM radio. When you're turning the dial, you are changing the frequency of your detector to receive a signal sent through that zone. Wow. There you have it. That is, that's great. And in the old days, when you turn, uh, old timers, you turn the knob to change the channel on the TV. You're actually changing the frequency detector inside the television. And there's that secondary knob that you could tune it a little sharper. I don't know if you knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. That, that, that got you honed in on that one frequency. Was it channel 7? Channel 8? Right. We just numbered them. We didn't give you the frequency because that's why. When you can just number them, which is what we did in the day. So anyway, all of these move at the speed of light. It is all light. Most of it is invisible to you. In fact, if you put this on a scale, 
on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, if you drew all of these things and you ask, well, how much of this whole electromagnetic spectrum can we see? Right. And we see this tiny slice, this tiny slice among all these broad zones in the electromagnetic spectrum. We are practically blind. Oh, goodness. And we didn't even know that until William Herschel discovered infrared light. Right. Look at that. That is. And, and, and I think I said in another explainer how he discovered it. I'll do it real quick now. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, I love you remember? this. I love this. Yeah, okay. I do remember. And I okay. Think Herschel, Her, Herschel's a big fan of Newton. Newton has a spectrum. He shows the sunlight is composed of colors. And you, you, you put a sort of slit in the curtains so the beam of light comes through your prism so that it's dark elsewhere except where the prism light goes. And Herschel said, I wonder what the temperatures are of each of these different colors. To even think to ask that. All right, so he's got a thermometer and he puts it in the blue and then he puts, and by the way, it's an experiment, so you need a control thermometer. So you put the control thermometer somewhere where, somewhere where the colors are not, all right? On the same table, but just put it outside the colors, which is what he did. And he checked the temperature of the blue and the violet and the green and the orange and the red. And he wrote out down all of these temperatures and what he noticed is that the temperature sitting outside of the visible spectrum read the highest temperature of them all. Right. And now, why didn't he just say, oh, it must be hot in this room. <laughs> I didn't realize how hot it was in here. <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with me. I can't, I can't feel heat anymore. <laughs> so, so there it was. And because he didn't put the thermometer somewhere else, he put it right. next he put to it the right other. next to it, right next to it, because the same environment exactly. is there. Right. And he said, "Oh my gosh, there must be a form of light, quote, unfit for vision." That's a. I love the terminology. Unfit for vision. Light that and is that, unfit for vision. And had that thermometer been on the other side of the violet, it's not clear that ultraviolet would have warmed the thermometer in this way. But he happened to have it on the side where the red was, and he discovered infrared light with that experiment. And so, so, so when I when I look at my microwave oven, and I look at a radio transmitter, or I look at my cell phone, and I look at the, my lamp on my table, it is one happy family of electromagnetic spectrum coming to us. That's that's so cool. That yeah, it, it's dope, and it's called electromagnetic because it it's a wave that simultaneously moves between being an electrical wave and a magnetic wave and it's self-propagating through space. So it's a wave that can move through the vacuum of space without having needed a medium through which that will to vibrate to send it through like sound does. Right. right? So could all those movies, Star Wars, they'd all be silent movie because no explosions are in space. But light has no problem moving through space even though it's a wave because it's a very different kind of wave. It's it's a self-propagating electrical and magnetic wave. And that's why we call it the electromagnetic spectrum. There you have it, Chuck. That's great. And it all started with my potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and what wavelength are they on? <laughs> <laughs> the delicious wave. The, the, the delicious. <laughs> we keep them warm with infrared. It all comes full circle. That's so true. All right, Chuck. That's all the time we got. All right, that was great. All right, that's been another explainer from Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up.